Hi everyone, it's Kelly Van Washenova here with Educational Technology Services at Denison. In today's Tuesday Tech Tip, I'm going to go over some ways that you can clearly communicate your schedule and your expectations to your students for the remainder of the semester. Now I know there's only two weeks left, but these strategies can be applied to future semesters where we're not working remote. So I'm building this off of something that Jeff Kurtz mentioned on Friday about communicating to students on the one-to-many level. So these are going to be tips to help make things easier for the whole class and to provide extra communication and contact with those students. I'm also basing some of this on a schedule that Lou Ludwig has shared with me, and this is something he provides his students, and I think it's a really great way to keep them organized and on task week to week. So let's get started. Okay, so now all I've done is open up my internet browser, and I'm using Google Chrome because that's what we recommend at Denison. It performs the best with all of our applications that we have online. So in here, I've just pulled up my Nopal course because I like to think of the Nopal course as a home base for students to go to when they need information about the class. Now, if you don't use Nopal, maybe home base for them is your weekly email updates or something like that, and that's also fine. But I like to start here with Nopal. Um, the other thing that I encourage people to do when they use Nopal is to use it along with those Google apps. So when we say Google Apps, we're talking about Google Drive, we're talking about Google Docs, Google Sheets, all of that stuff that comes along with Gmail as being part of a Google Suite school. So in there as well, we have YouTube accounts, and I'm going to touch on those briefly in this video, but we do have a longer video where we go over how to set up a YouTube account if you're interested. So in here, um, oh, something else to note. I have my little face over here, and I did that because I saw Lou does that for his video to his students, and I thought it was just a great way to add a personal touch. If people are interested, I can definitely make a Tuesday tech tip on how to do that. So getting started with the actual content of what I want to cover this week is in here, um, I'm just, like I said, Nopal is just kind of like a home base that I have for my class. But when I look at a what a remote schedule could potentially look like, now there are a variety of ways to set these up and it really will just depend on your class and your different needs. But first, I'm listing my office hours. So maybe I'll bold or even make a little bit bigger each of the parts here so that these are very clear. And I would recommend every week including the same points. So office hours. If you have an optional synchronous class discussion, include that up there. This, if you have a reading, list it, link to it. If you have a discussion, list it and link to it. And the same for assignments and quizzes and all of it. So every week you can list out all of the expectations for that particular week and just have them there. Now format it in different ways if you want. You could make them all little headers, whatever works for you. And just making it very clear that these are all the things. Now we've listed them, but we haven't linked to them. So I think that's also an important step. With the office hours here, I'm actually going to grab that link from my Google Calendar. So once I'm in my Google Calendar, I can go over to my office hours. And for this example, I've just put these on my own calendar. I haven't added my students to them. But if I click on the edit button, I can copy and paste the whole class roster under guests if I really want. But I could also just click on add conferencing and choose Hangouts Meet. And it's going to generate my meeting information. Now, what's convenient is if you set it up as a recurring event, this link to the Meet will be the same for every single event. So that's really great. So you can actually just right click, copy link address, which is what I'm doing for the demo here. And then I'm just going to take that over to my document that I'm creating and put the link right there, highlight it, and paste it. So once I share this document with students, they'll be able to click right in there to join it. I'm going to do the same thing for my synchronous class discussion. I'm just going to go in here, and I already have my Meet link generated, so I can just copy that right there. I can highlight it, paste it, 
there. Now I can go ahead and copy. I have a video. I'm going to share this with them. Copy that link. Paste it in here. And etc. So I have an article they're reading, and it happens to be on the internet. Now, if you have like a PDF you're sharing with them, you can also just upload that to your Google Drive and share the link over to them. You can even upload it to Notebull and share that link into this document. So I've added some of the information for them for this week, and now I have this discussion board down here, and it's in Notebull. So we've tested this, and you can actually copy out an assignment from Notebull and share that with your students so they can open it directly. I'm just going to grab this private discussion three. And if you grab the URL up here, copy that out, put that in here for your students, making sure it's the correct assignment, obviously. When they click on it, it should open right up in their Notebull course as long as they're already signed into Notebull. So that is something they will need to be signed in through Denison. And you could do the same. Say you're sharing this. Copy that link. Go ahead. Paste it in there. So now the idea here is that they can come to this and have all of the information for the week of 420 right at their fingertips. Now, I kept talking about Notebull being a home base. So let me show you a little bit more about what I mean by having Notebull as that home base. But in the Google document, you can go up to Share. And you could either paste all of their email addresses in here so that they can access your document, or you can click the Get Shareable link. And by default, it's going to make it to where anyone at Denison with the link can view. That's going to be the easiest. Um, do it this way unless you're really worried about them sharing the link with other people. If that's the case, you know, turn this back off and enter their addresses, their email addresses. But for me, I'm going to hit copy link and done. And then I'm going to head back into that Nopal course. And I can just add this as a link. And I can say schedule for the week of 420, put it in there, create, and now they can go straight from that Notebull documents tab and hop over to the schedule. So something to think about in here is the reason I like putting it in Notebull is because if they have notifications on, they're going to get notified that I've put the document in there. But the other thing is you can click this little arrow and it will let you share on the bulletin. And you can hit share. And now I can see that there is a message on the bulletin that will take them there. So that's how to use a Google Doc for it. I'll also show you Lou's example here. So this is what he has been doing for his class. And he actually breaks them down into groups for different uh, virtual discussion times, which is great. I just removed them from this example because I didn't want to put the students' names in here. But he has actually a video that explains how his remote calendar is going to work, which is fantastic. And then he breaks it down kind of similar to what I did, except since he's doing a schedule that he is just running one document for the rest of the semester, it looks a little bit different. But essentially, it's the same example of what I did. He has homework, all of that. What I liked as well is you can see here, once something is done, so this is for the week of 3.30, he put the meet link there so they could join the meeting. But then he also, once the session's over, he put the video link in here so that the students who couldn't be at the virtual class could still watch the video of it, which I think is wonderful. So if you're doing these virtual classes where you're having discussion, do keep in mind that not all students will be able to make those. So go ahead and make that video, and then you can just add that link right back into your schedule for the rest of the semester or for your weekly schedule. So the other thing Lou has in here that I'm a big fan of is the color coordinating. Um, I love it personally, but just be careful in case there's someone who has a visual disability and they can't either see certain colors or the contrast levels aren't 
great. Um, so we want to make sure we're designing for everyone. I think he clarifies in here uh, that which ones need to be completed before virtual meetings and which ones need to be submitted in Noble. So he's doing it the right way by not just relying on color, but also reinforcing what different things need. So just keeping that in mind if you're using color. The other way you could do it is within Noteball, in your Documents tab, you could just add a folder, and we have other examples in here, and you could name it Week of April 20 or however you want to organize your folders, and you can even just put all of your links right in the folder. So add a link, you could paste the link in there. And you could go ahead and just have that folder be the running. The only downside is you can't put descriptions about the links, so that's unavailable. I do believe Noble has an enhancement coming out soon where you can tag things in your Documents tab. So hopefully that will come out uh, at the beginning of the summer and that could potentially be something you use in future semesters. All right. So those are a few ways that you can go ahead and share a very clear linked to schedule with your students. If you need some additional support with this, please go ahead and reach out to us and we can do some consultation one-on-one -on -one with you. We have ETS consultation hours available on our ETS calendar. And then also keep in mind, if you need any other help, always email servicedesk at denison.edu and they'll direct you to the right people. Thank you for watching this Tuesday's Tech Tip. I hope it helps you this semester and with your future classes going forward. Someone, send help. <laughs>